My name is Alex Klaus Sofer and I'm a journalist living in London and I write on the Middle East. I didn't become a journalist until my early 30s, although I'd actually wanted to be one since I was 11, apparently. People have known me back in the village, so. I started being interested in the Middle East in 1998 when I was changing career, so I had some time and I wanted to go and travel in the Middle East, but not purely as a tourist. And I found a kind of work experience trip, which was teaching, turned out to be teaching in a refugee camp in the West Bank. And I do remember at the time that somebody said before I was going, oh, that'll be life changing. And I thought, mm, I bet it won't be. But <laughs> in fact, yeah, it was the start of an of a ongoing journey. I wanted to go and explore a part of the Middle East that wasn't just about conflict, where A does something to B and then B retaliates. And I wanted to kind of get to a place which is more akin to the, the places that you read about in travel books, which is exotic and interesting and complex and rich and varied, and explore it in those terms rather than as a place that's always in the news for, for, for being at war. So that was why I started to go to Lebanon and then when I looked around I realised there were no sort of accessible books on the subject in terms of travel writing and uh, I thought I'd try and write one. I didn't know for one thing whether the Lebanese would play ball. There weren't many people who'd worked there that I, that I knew or in that kind of way. The journalists that I did know had, had worked there very intermittently or a few years ago and knew it from the old days. So I didn't know how, it would o how open it would be to the kind of thing that I wanted to do, which was a much more sort of human interest um, travel project. And uh, uh, I was very surprised when I did get there how easy it was to get access to people, to get interviews, to get ordinary people to tell me about themselves and their lives and their, their worries and, and hopes and fears and, and so on. So this is Daunt's Bookshop in Hampstead in London. It's one of the independent bookshops that stocks my book and I'm just going to go in and see whether they've got copies at the moment. My approach was basically a mixture of journalistic research where I had an idea about what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go and I would seek out interviews. I did actually have quite a long list of contacts through people that I knew, although I hadn't been there before. So I pursued those and those were very easy. One thing always led to another. And then the other way was a sort of classic travel writer's approach, which was just to go around, observe, um, talk to people through chance encounters and, and, and friendships and get material that way. It's really nice to see the book here among all the other Middle East books uh, on the shelves finally. It's nearly four years since I first went out to Lebanon so it's been quite a long process and now this is the end of it with the book on the shelves. The book sold uh, very well um, for its, its niche. It was my publisher's best-selling foreign title and it went to a second printing within eight months, early, much earlier than they'd anticipated. So how did the human face of Lebanon come about? Well, I was thinking about going to Lebanon myself to do a TV documentary, just a low-key one. And I started to do some research, went to my local bookshop in Canberra and I bought Paradise Divided by Alex Klaushofer. And I read this book and I thought, this is exactly what I would like to film. Well, a while ago I got an email out of the blue from Australia and it was Richard, having read my book and being quite taken with it, asking me if I was interested in doing a documentary about Lebanon with him. So I've come to London to actually meet Alex and to see if we get on all right and that we can work together. And basically we've headed off from the beginning. She's a great person. Um, we've got good senses of humour and I think we can work together really well. And I think she will present a really good documentary. I uh, would love to go back to Lebanon and do something in a, in a different medium. I think going back with a, a camera would be quite a different experience. I'd be drawing on my knowledge of Lebanon in some ways, but in other ways I'd be doing things in a, in a fresh way, perhaps meeting some new people and new places. I would think it would be really, really interesting to go to the north 
to the Syrian border. OK, OK. Um, it gets very rural and remote. What I particularly like about his style, having talked to him quite extensively about it, is that he works just with a camera and he's, a, he's a, basically a one-man show. So I think we'd be able to maintain the kind of intimate feel and get good access to people um, that I managed to achieve in the book. And it will be a very contrasting insight to what most people see on Lebanon, which is basically on the news, and it's uh, just seeing a country that's in strife and in conflict. So now it's just a matter of um, seeking the funds to, uh, to, to get it up and get it happening. <laughs>